RDA Rafael Dos Anjos stole the show on Saturday, defeating Kevin Lee in the main event via submission. Great performance, great bounce back win for the former UFC lightweight champion. He's kind enough to be joining us right now. Rafael, where is Rafael? I don't know. Is he on the phone? Oh, there he is. Rafael, how are you? Very good. Thank you for having me, Ariel. A pleasure as always. Congratulations on the win. By the way, did you have a chance? I know you were getting ready for uh, the fight, but did you have a chance to watch Michelle's fight? You see him all doing the flips and all that stuff? No, I heard a lot of him. Um, I heard he, he did great stuff on the fight, but I, I didn't have a chance to watch his fight. Okay, yeah, and I understand you were getting ready for your own. Um, so great performance. You get back on track. I, I heard that you said afterwards that it felt like a weight was lifted off your shoulders because of the losing streak. Try to reassert yourself at 170. On this Monday, how do you feel now that you're back in the in the win column? Yeah, man, I feel great to walk home, you know, after 18 months without having uh, my, my, my hands raised inside the octagon. Uh, my last win was against Robbie Lawler in December 2017, and I fought Kobe and Usman, two losses back to back. But I'm, you know, thank you God, I got a, I got back. I'm, I'm back on the winning, winning path. How, how much were the losses weighing on you? Like, did you feel like this was a, a must-win situation for you, Rafael? Yeah, especially uh, I was, I was, I was, I was trying to not put too much pressure on, on my shoulders. But I, I was on that situation for two times in my life. I lost uh, two in a row on UFC debut. Uh, and then before I move up the division, I, move, I lost twice in a row too after I lose my belt. And I was able to, you know, turn things around and get some winning streak. And I feel that I'm on this, in this situation right now. And Kevin moving up the division, he was big, he was strong, fast. But, uh, and I felt like, uh, was kind of, you know, a bit of risky because he, he didn't have not to lose on that fight. Mm. He just came like two fight. And I think, uh, uh, but I was able to, to put my strategy and use my experience on my favor. I thought he started really well. I thought he looked really good in the first round. Were you surprised at all by the way he fought in that first round? Did he, did he catch you off guard at all? No, he didn't like he didn't rock me on any time, and I knew he would come strong. I knew that, uh, but I, that was all part of the plan, you know. Keep wearing him down. Even he was putting me against the fence. I was being like making him work, being heavy on him, uh, you know, making him work hard and trying to, you know. Uh, I knew as the fight goes forward, it will be a lot of more advantage for me, and that's how the thing play out. Okay, and then uh, obviously as the fight went on, you uh, began to pick up steam, but he also began to lose some steam. He, he started to run out of gas. Could you feel that? And, and if so, how soon in the fight did you feel that? Like, did you start to feel that in the second round that he wasn't as quick, wasn't as strong? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I, I was feeling that he was, you know, gassing out a little bit. And, and, but, you know, I, I think once, uh, I think once I, I start like putting my takedowns to and shutting off his takedowns and taking him down that, that, that play a big part, big mental game on that fight. And I was able to, you know, be on top too and take him down. I think that that changed the fight. Do you feel like this narrative that he ran out of gas is almost like taking something away from you that it's not giving you enough credit? Sorry, can I say it again, Ariel? Please? You know, like a lot of the talk after this fight is that, oh, Kevin looked good, but then he ran out of gas. Do you feel like it should be, no, Rafael, you know, maybe weathered the early storm, but then he actually, like, you know, executed the game plan and, and, and was the reason why he ran out of gas? Like, do you feel like you're not getting enough credit after this kind of win? Yeah, man, people, a lot, a lot of negativ negativity out there, you know. People always going to say, you know, and he held up good until the fourth, but you know that was that was part of my strategy, you know. And I think uh, it's about who wanted more, and uh, I want that fight more. And I don't give, you know, I you know I, I was uh, with a good cardio, in a good day, good spirit, and and I I don't I don't listen to this this negativity, you know. If if the fight didn't go your way, you you were going to keep fighting, right? Like your career wasn't on the line here, correct? No, not at all, man. You know, that would be, you know, uh, uh, I got that question before 
and the fight, but I say, uh, the, you know, uh, that thing not even crossed my mind, like uh, lose that fight. That, that, that wasn't an option for me. You know, I wasn't playing with that option. Uh, I I knew I had to win. I you know I was in that fight so much, but of course not. My career, uh, I'm 34 years old, 40 40 fights, 40 professional fights, but I still I still got a lot on me, and I'm on this game for a while. Would you like your next fight to not be against a wrestler? Would you like to see a different kind of opponent next? I don't care, you know. I, I show, I show like that, that's why I took the fight with Kevin. A lot of people say, yeah, another wrestler gonna be the same thing, but you know, I took him down. I took, I took Kobe down twice, if I'm not wrong, and and you know, I was able to stop his takedown. He he just put me against the fence, and I think sometimes that game uh, on the for the judge's eyes. Uh, um, it, it looked like a bit bad, but that was part of my strategy issue, you know, making him carry me there. And I know I have my submissions attempts, and but I, I don't care, you know, whoever UFC think I was, you know, uh, I thought maybe, but uh, Paris, but UFC already put some, uh, put Paris and Nate Diaz in Anaheim. But, you know, that's a lot of options out there. We'll see. Well, speaking of options, earlier in the show, uh, Leon Edwards, who's won seven in a row, said that he would like to fight you in Abu Dhabi. Do you have any interest in this fight? Nah, man. You know, we'll see what UFC. I, I have interest on that on, on the on the to be on that on that uh, uh, card. That would be good. I fought in Abu Dhabi. If I'm not, I think in 2012, 2010. I think I fought in Abu Dhabi was. You know, good energy, and that could be. But you know, I think I have other people on my radar. You know, even even uh, uh, even Connor, he's still talking about my broken foot as I as I, I bruise my foot. You know, and that that show what kind of person he is. You know, talking about like that, a fellow fighter get hurt before the fight and still making fun of it. That could happen with anybody on this game. But, you know, I have other people on my radar. Yeah, uh, minutes after your victory on Saturday, Connor was tweeting about you. Uh, I think he was responding to another journalist, Josh Gross, tweeting about, you know, what, what might have been had that fight materialized between you and him back at UFC 196. And he said, oh, you know, you had, you had, I think he, he said a bruised toe and then, correct, and then someone tried to correct him. And he was just kind of talking about it, which is what you just alluded to. Do you feel like that's his way of trying to you know, maybe poke you to try to get this fight? Do you think he's interested in this fight or is it just his way of stirring the pot? How do you take that? Yeah, I, I think we had, we were uh, scheduled to fight it twice. Uh, one, I broke my foot. The other one, he, you know, he got involved on the, on the, on the bus altercation in New York. But uh, according to him, he was scheduled to fight for the interim belt, Walter Wade belt in Rio. So we'll see, man. I think that's that's a fight uh, uh, that everybody wants to see, and I think that 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 if if I did not broke my foot, that would be a, a total different career for Conor McGregor. Or that his career would play out totally different, and he got lucky. He fought Diaz and hit that. He he, he got finished by Diaz, but he was able to come back and and win another fight. But you know. I think if that fight happened, uh, uh, that would change his career. But of course, we'll see. Looking forward to the future. And, you know, uh, uh, I, that, that's something that interested me for sure. Yeah, I wrote a story today for ESPN.com about how there's three fighters who have been scheduled to fight Conor McGregor in his career, and the fight didn't materialize because of an injury. Uh, Cole Miller, Andy Ogle, and you. The other two are no longer in the UFC, and they were scheduled to fight him you know, early in his career, but you're still here, you're still fighting, you're still winning, and I feel like it would be a nice story if you got that opportunity to, to finally fight him a few years later. So I, for one, hope that they actually figure out a way to make it happen. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that's something that I would like, and I think a lot of fans would like to watch that one too, and especially for the whole you know history behind that. Uh, I injury two weeks before the fight, and you know uh, uh, we like supposed fight for the interim welterweight uh, uh, champion, and 
things didn't work on his side and we'll see you know i'm open to it and i hope things happen uh, would you consider going back down to 155 for connor Mm, Ariel, I need uh, that. That would be something that I would have to change my whole uh, 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 my whole diet. That would be something that I would have to have a longer notice. Mm. Uh, we'll say like three, four months notice, and okay. I would I would need to change things around. But uh, that would be something. But the ideal would be a one sixty five or one hundred seventy pounds. That would be ideal for me. Speaking of 165, uh, Kevin threw out the offer to weigh in at 165, but but you said no. Why? I don't, you know, I don't do agreement to my enemies before, you know, on the fight week. You know, I, uh, we are scheduled to fight 170 pounds, and I'm not gonna do. If he wanna, that like, like I told, you know, uh, some people that ask me if he wanna make 165 pounds, that's on him. But I'm I'm gonna make 170 pounds that I that I that I'm signing for, and but you know I don't do any agreements with my my he was my enemy you know that week and and I don't want to make any agreements. Would you like to see them open up a 165 pound division? Yeah, I think that would be good. You know, uh, that would be if we could push that 170 pounds for 175. Right. And add that 165 pounds of vision, that would be great. I think uh, a lot of big guys at 170 pounds would like that. And like smaller guys like me would be happy to with 165 pounds. All right. Well, congratulations on the win, Hafel. I'm, I'm really happy for you that you were able to get back on track. A very impressive win, dominant win, a decisive win. You get the finish. You are now, I'm, I'm being told, you are the 13th fighter in UFC history with at least two wins via arm triangle. So that's tied for a UFC record. One more, and uh, it seems like you would uh, move up in that particular ranking. And also your 18 UFC wins is tied for sixth most in company history and second most among Brazilians, just two behind Damian Maia. So also, by the way, your victory over Kevin Lee was the fourth latest finish in UFC welterweight history. So a couple of notable things about that great win for you on Saturday night. Happy to see you back on track, Rafael, and I'm looking forward to what's next for you. I wish you all the best. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you for having me. And let's see, let's see what the future holds. And I will be ready for any opportunity that came up. All right. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, Rafael. Always a pleasure to talk to you. There he is, Rafael Dos Anjos. Looking forward to seeing what is next for him.